Welcome back to the program. We're talking now with Dr. Niger Loha. He's a veterinary officer at the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries. The question is, rabies management in Trinidad and Tobago. I, I just want to say that um, in the break, uh, we were talking, and I, it, it's a question that I've always had on my mind. I wanted to get some, some clarification about, some elucidation, as the late Mr. Manning used to say. Uh, to what extent a vet is, is a doctor and, and, and like another doctor? And to what extent a vet is... is sort of familiar with, with the human form and can probably provide solutions to problems that we have quite apart from, from uh, animals. Because, well, let me, let me welcome you to the program, Dr. Loha, because I, I, what I'm saying is that in a lot of cases, when, when we go to the doctor, we have to tell the doctor what, what is happening with us outside and inside, but an animal can't speak. So if you, if you could figure out what is happening with an animal, you can figure out sometimes you have a better understanding from somebody who's saying, well, where they're hurting and what, they, what they're going through. I, I'm always curious about that. <laughs> yes, of course. Before because uh, we, so. Actually, we have to be detectives because we have to follow all the, the signals and signs because the animals cannot speak to us and tell us what's wrong. So we have to look at all these clinical signs. So we call it clinical signs and not symptoms because we have to do, we use our observational skills to observe, to know what what diseases might be connected with what you're seeing. Yeah. Right. And um, people always say that sometimes vets are, are greater doctors than medical doctors because we, we study all species. We, we treat all species except for humans. Yeah. Right. And, and that's a critical point that, um, well, we could talk and animals can't talk. So correct, when, when you correct. take your dog or your, or your, or your yeah. cat or your bird to the vet. Yeah. It's kind, it's kind of like a, a pediatrician dealing with a, a, a five-month-old. Baby kind of talk to you the same way, you know, similar. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the term veterinary medicine. Mm -hmm. right. So we're talking here about rabies. What is rabies? Rabies, is, uh, medical term, is acute viral encephalomyelitis, which actually means that it's a, it's a disease of the central nervous system or inflammation of the nervous system. Now, this disease is well known all through the world. It exists globally in every continent. Um, except maybe Antarctica, and and also it exists in all mammals across the board. The the vector for the disease rabies is usually a carnivorous vector, such as dog, cat, skunk, weasel, mongoose. Okay. Um, in Trinidad, it is the vampire bat. Yeah, carnivorous because they eat meat. Yeah, they eat meat. Yes, <laughs> right. So the um, the vampire bat is the vector for Trinidad. But also, rabies is also well known as a zoonotic disease, probably the most well known zoonotic disease, meaning that it's a disease that could be spread from animal to human. So you have to be very careful. That's why it make, makes it very important in, in our situation in yeah. Trinidad. Yeah. And when somebody is described as being rabid, rabid, that has to do with it performing as when they have rabies? Yes. <laughs> when somebody is rabid, well, you usually use that word rabid when putting it into the, to the animals, right? And that shows that refers to when the the rabies has reached the stage in the, in the system where it, where it reaches the brain, and the animal starts to display clinical signs, as I just spoke before about clinical signs, clinical manifestation. Yeah. So they start to show different um, symptoms of rabies. Um, most of the time, they will foam at the mouth because they are unable to swallow, so the saliva cannot go down. Um, they, they would be, have a aversion from food and water, don't want to drink water, and they call it, we call that hydrophobia. So this is one of these, the signs. And they'll be... Yeah, hydrophobia? Yeah. yeah. Because they, 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 you, you can't swallow, you can't... Well, they're, they're basically afraid of water. When you, you present water, then they pull away, right? And they're also unable to drink because the esophagus is, is, is paralyzed, right? The swallowing mechanism is paralyzed, so they're unable to to drink. So that is what we call a hydrophobia. So there's a number of um, clinical... How do, you, how do you treat that? How you treat... Well, rabies is something... Once it ex, um, you reach the stage of clinical signs, it cannot be treated. Once you reach clinical signs, death is sure. Fatality is sure. But it's 100% pre preventable with the avoidance, with, with vaccination, and even if you're if you yeah, if you um, realize that you're exposed in time, um, post exposure vaccination can be done, right? Yeah. And vaccination of animals, um, livestock, would also prevent the, the spread of the rabies. 
control of the vector too would also con um, control the, the spread of rabies also. Yeah, are, are there times when the, the incidence of it or the presence of bats is, is, is more than other times in the year? Or are there periods over a period of years when we have to be more on the lookout than other times? No, well, um, we... Um, they, they, it operates in cycles, right? But at this point in time, the population of vampire bats is, is very high in the country, but the Ministry of Agriculture, together with the anti-rabies unit, we have a unit called the anti-rabies unit, um, is diligent in, in reducing the population. Their purpose is to reduce the population. Is, is, is that unit properly staffed, or as is the case in most places, do you have a shortage of, of staff at, at one level or the other? Um, yeah, well, we, we lost, when I'm saying a lot of people retired, we need to, mm -hmm. to replenish some of the staff. Yes, but they are, they are very effective and, and funded. And this, this, this association, this anti rabies unit, has been around since, um, since 1935. Actually, we are the first country in the world to actually implement a program specifically, a government program specifically for the control of vampire bats in the country. No kidding? They I mean, were called we the Bat Control Unit. Yeah. That is since um, colonial times. And then they became the anti rabies unit in 1956. Yeah. All right, so basically 88 years they have been around. Well, well, well right. I think growing up, you, know, you used to see people coming around, yeah. you know, and to treat with bats and so on. And yeah. So their, um, their purpose is basically like, to alleviate the, the threat, do, do certain actions in order to alleviate the threat of rabies in the country for livestock and, and human beings. So there's many uh, methods of doing that. Yeah, so to, to what extent, how do you divide between treating humans who may be infected by the bats as opposed to animals? No, well, pe the animals who are, who are infected by the bats, are we sure they, they are showing signs of the rabies. In Trinidad, we have, is, uh, traditionally, has been the bovine, um, cows, buffalo, usually. And we usually see ascending paralysis and staggering and re recumbency, they, they get down uh, and unable to stand up. And certain CNS uh, behavior, you know. So when we see that, we usually will call the animal and we'll, we'll actually do a test to make sure, to ensure that is to diagnose, a definite diagnosis to make sure that it's rabies. Yeah. Right? So, um, so that animal would, would not survive once, once the signs are rabies. So there's no treatment. The, the, we, we focus on prevention, and prevention is by vaccinating the animal. So at all the animals, all the susceptible animals in the country, we try to vaccinate them every year. Um, sometimes, depending on what the, the type of vaccine is, it could be every year or it could be every three years. But um, vaccination is important. We vaccinate and tag the animals. So, so some... some, some animals require, or it is the, 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 the kind of, of rabies that is involved where you would require, they would be required to be vaccinated annually or, or triannually, triannually? No, well, it depends on the, the, the type of vaccine that we have. Yeah. You know, so, some are one year, some are two. The, the length of time of effective immunization, it's, it varies, depending on the brand that we get. Yeah, and, right? and are, there, are there times when they just you'll run out of stock and you have to wait and... <laughs> well, some, sometimes we have those problems. But if it's, in our case, a human being being exposed to, to rabies, like for, for instance, if a human being is bitten or, or bitten by a rabbit dog, which would, would not happen in Trinidad because we have not had canine rabies since 1914. But we're very concerned about that because south of the border where where the, the border is very porous and we have a lot of illegal immigrants and illegal animals coming in. There's canine rabies in South America, so we have to be careful and mindful of that also. And how, how what, 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 what state the surveillance mechanism is for those things? Because you just, that, that's another area. Right? Entirely people coming and bringing animals with them and so on. So quite apart from people coming in the country legally, they're bringing animals that um, are... To, yes, an issue to be watched as well. Yes, yes, but um, when we when we do happen to to be aware of it and we we catch the, the, the people, or we, at least we catch the, the um, sometimes they abandon the animals on the shore. Yeah. But we know they're from the foreign land, 
we actually have to seize and, and basically euthanize them. Because we can't allow them in, in the country. Because yeah. we don't know what disease they carry. And this has been going on, hmm, that was more than 10 years, this has been an ongoing thing. Yeah. And you, you talked about um, the possibility of, of coming in contact with a, with a rabid dog. Um, how, how, how do you find that out? And, and no, well, if I, well, we do have that canine rabies in trade. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. But uh, if a dog bites you unprovoked, uh, unprovoked, I have no reason to just bite it. Yeah. Right? That is usually a sign. Sometimes we have to observe the dog um, in quarantine, or observe the behavior, and see if there's any development of, of the disease. But if an animal bites you, if, whether it's wild, dog, or whatever, or bat, the first thing you have to do is go to, um, go to the pipe with soap and water and, and scrub the area for 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. Uh, yeah. Right, for 15 minutes. Then contact your doctor immediately. Then you need to contact the, the county, um, you could contact the county veterinary officer, which is like myself, I'm the veterinary officer of St. George West. Yeah. And we could contact the anti rabies unit to make them aware of the situation. And we also contact the veterinary public health. Veterinary public health will ensure that, um, will protect human life and make sure that, that the person is healthy. So in a case like that, you will have to do a, may, you may have to do a post-exposure exposure vaccination of the, of the person to make sure that they... Yeah, and you're speaking uh, to this question about um, uh, the, the, the issue of... Um, Animals becoming, dogs becoming rabid and, and what you'll do in that case. Mm. So, so is, is that the same as when, when somebody is described as a mad dog, a rap, mad dog? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is a mad dog disease. That is a, um, if somebody's rabid. Yeah. Maybe the, the folklore about vampires and, uh, and, and that kind of behavior, like, you know, is, is, is from the, the rabies virus, you know. Um, the folklore about zombies and so on is, is also... It could be derived from the rabies virus, right? Because the behavior is, is similar. When, a, when a, a dog is infected by the virus, okay, usually when you get infected, the wound is, is, is filled with the, 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 viral, um, the viral load yeah. of the rabies, and it moves from cell to cell. And then it's eventually it will, it will reach a, a, a nerve, a peripheral nerve, and that will go up the nerve, and enter the spinal cord. When it reaches the spinal cord, it will ascend, to the, ascend the spinal cord and eventually reach the brain. Yeah. When it reaches the brain, you'll start to see all these signs. And the dog will just start to uh, get very, move from a playful dog to a very aggressive dog, looking to bite anything that is wrong, yeah. right? Unprovoked. Also. Unprovoked. Bite the cage, bite stones, bite snap at people, bite other dogs, and they eventually will par get paralyzed and and all the bodily function will fail and they will die. Yeah, over, over a period of time? Yeah. Like, like, like how long that, that process? That takes? process could take between the time they, they, they start to display signs um, and, and that could be, could be about two weeks, yeah. right? And, but by that time, they already bit a number of other dogs, spread yeah. the disease, and maybe bit some human beings. Yeah. So thank God we don't have that in, in Trinidad. We don't? No, since 1914 was the last case. 1914. 1914. Yeah, 1914 was the last piece <laughs> of, um, of canine, of, um, canine rabies virus. Yeah, that's 107, 108 yeah. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, correct. Over 100 years ago. What, what, has, what has been the cause of that, of, of us sort of wiping that out? If, if, if no, well, we, anything, it just happened. Well, we have very strict um, quarantine measures. For instance, um, rabies is prevalent in the United States and maybe um, in South America, canine rabies, but we, we have strict laws as far as quarantine. Um, animal has to be tested before it, it, it comes to Trinidad. Animal has to be vaccinated before it comes to Trinidad for the disease. Um, we used to keep them in quarantine for a certain length of time observing them when they come. Yeah. Right? So we have methods in place to make sure that it doesn't enter Trinidad. Yeah. So that is why illegal um, importation is, is a problem. When people come you know, they come and they jump on a pirogue from Israel and they come with whatever livestock or their animals, you know, and chew, you know, on police borders. It becomes a problem. 
Because you never know what diseases enter in your country. Yeah, because I was going to ask about um, what, what, what is known publicly as, you know, what, what's called poor health arrangements and so on. But some people evade and avoid that. And, yes, and yes, yes. And, and surveillance of these things, it's, it's iffy because if people find ways to, to get in, you know, unchecked and undetected. Yeah. You don't know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. So but you, but the only legal way to enter Trinidad is where the airport yes. and, the, oh, and, the, oh. and the ports, right? So these things are supposed to, we supposed to have, um, provide them with import permits when they come in to make, and we have to make sure that they have a health certificate, make sure everything is healthy before, because there are times that animals come in on the airline without, and, and they have to be set back. Yeah, yeah. or denied entry. And, yeah, denied and, entry, yeah. Yeah. And that is to preserve the, the health of the, the, um, the community oh, in Trinidad. The health of the population. Population. Both, both human and animal. Because as I told you before, this disease is a zoonosis, meaning that it can be spread from animal to human. So it's a kind of one health thing, make sure that, that the humans are also protected. Yeah. Um, you said you, you're in charge of the area of uh, um, St. George West. Um, just, just give us a sense again as to what constitutes St. George West. Well, St. George from, from, West, from where West. St. George West is, with, well, my, my office is in Curep. Yeah. All right. But the, the borders of St. George West will be um, east as far as Wallerfield, west as far as uh, Chagaramas, north as far as um, Maracas Bay, and south as far as, uh, as Karani. Yeah. But we have veterinary officers, um, officers throughout the country. Yeah. Curab is one, Wallafield is the next, um, El Reposo is the, is the next office there. There's also Chase Village, um, Penal, uh, Craigness Princess Town, and also um, Rio Claro. Okay. So, so health is one of those areas where we still have this idea of, of, of the, the county divisions because we're into regional corporations now when we used to be county, we had eight counties and so on. But a lot of health and education is still sort of subdivided based on, on the former county arrangements. So you have St. George West and you have St. George West. Well, yes. well, as far as, um, well, as far as agriculture is concerned, yes, mm -hmm. it's like that. But we have two, we have North Division and South Division. Regional Administration North and Regional Administration South. So basically it's split in, it's also governed by um, administratively by, by two subdivisions. Right. Is there anything that you, 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 you wanted to say that, that, that you, didn't, you didn't have the chance to say as, as we wind up about why we're talking about this issue? Um, well, we need, um, well, the anti rabies unit also well, need the, sub, the support. Um, and we also need to, well, the, we control the population by doing things, certain things, a process called night trapping. Night trapping. Night trapping. And that is um, because, and we focus on the two, the two bats that cause the problem, which is the common vampire bat, there's mother's rotundus, and the, the white wing vampire bat, the mias youngie, right? We focus on those two. So what we do, we go out in the night, the Andrew Rivers, you know, go out in the night. They, they set traps, they set nets, they collect, they catch the bats, they, they um, identify the vampire bats, and they also paste them with with the anti covalent poison basically on them. And then they fly back to the roost. When they go to the roost, they socialize, they're very social animals. And in grooming, the anti covalent will spread from one bat to about 30, 30 to 40. So in the last. That's a multiplier effect. That's yeah, the reason I mentioned is because we have been making efforts to decrease the population. And since, since April of this year, we have caught and paced 400 bats, right? And that 400 bats will lead to the death of 12,000 to, to wow. 16,000 bats. So it's a very effective measure, and that wow. is one of the ways of we control the population. Yeah, I never imagined that this would have been such a fascinating discussion. <laughs> we haven't gotten half through, halfway through this. We'll find a, another way to, to get you back to continue to talk about that, the connection between uh, animals and people. In this case, that is what this is about. Okay. Dr. Niger Loha. Veterinary Officer the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries, and son of the late great Sil Loha. Let's, let's say that, let's put that out there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, one thing as I mentioned, I didn't tell you the, the phone numbers. Okay. Um, the Anti-Rabies Head Office is 
the National Animal Disease Center, NADC, and the number is, let me get the number. The number for that is 693-2910. And any time that uh, a farmer has a problem with, with bats, they could contact this number. Uh, my office, the St. George West, is the number is 331 Six nine three two nine one zero and three three one one four two three one four three three. Yes, sir. One. Yeah. One four three three. One four three three. Yeah. Thank you very much. We will take a break. Still, that's be coming back shortly. Mm -hmm.